Hey everybody, Scott Roberts from Explore Scientific. Yesterday we were talking about how to use your smartphone in order to make images through your telescope. And so we talked about the uh, Explore Scientific smartphone camera adapter, which has a pedestal here to attach your smartphone, slide it around so that the lens of the camera matches over the exit pupil or where the beam of light comes out of the eyepiece. Uh, but uh, there's some other aspects of making uh, astrophotographs of the planets and the moon, which is primarily what you'll be doing uh, when you start uh, with uh, your smartphone camera, although you can do deep sky stuff as well, and we'll get into that. But um, one of the things that a lot of people find is that the image can be very, very bright and kind of overpower uh, your smartphone. And so, uh, you know, the telescope is a light collecting machine. And uh, for instance, on this 114 millimeter reflector, if you're a beginner and you have something like this, you're, you're gathering light over this entire lens surface here, and it can appear very, very bright, and at times it can just saturate your smartphone. And so one of the things that you can do is you can make a mask, and this effectively stops down the scope uh, so that less light's getting to, this, to your image. But the other thing that's really cool is that you're gonna find out that if you have poor seeing, now when I say poor seeing, it can be super dark where you are, it can be really, really clear where you are, but you can also look up at the sky and maybe see the stars twinkling. Stars don't twinkle by themselves in space, it's our atmosphere making them twinkle. And so a telescope gathers all, it, it increases, you know, one of the, it has light gathering power, it has resolving power, okay? So with resolving power, it's actually going to see scintillation or the twinkling of a star even better than you can with the naked eye. So. With a, with a mask though, uh, you're able to stop down the scope, and I'll show you how to make a mask, uh, but that would allow the scope to see through poor seeing better. That'll make a sharper image. Uh, it will reduce the uh, light intensity coming in so we're not saturating the camera. Um, but there's all kinds of different masks that you could make. Another type of mask that you could make uh, would be for getting precise focus. And I'll show you one of those. It's called a Badenoff mask. And uh, uh, there are patterns that you can download off the internet. I'll show you an example of one. Uh, but let's go make some masks. Okay, so here I am. I've just got a piece of cardboard here. You can, you know, you can use a, a mat board if you wanted to, a foam core if you'd like to. Some of it's already painted black. A lot of people like to use black. Um, but just to make a simple off-axis mask, and that's what we're gonna do for our Newtonian telescope, because if you look at a Newtonian, uh, that 114 Newtonian has a secondary mirror right in the middle, okay? And so that, that mirror in the middle, uh, if, I put, if I put a hole right in the middle, the, the secondary mirror is gonna be blocking my hole, so I need to make a mask so that the hole's off to the side, okay? so. Let's just use the lens cap, and we'll just uh, draw a little pattern here, like so. And then I'll just take a razor blade, and we'll just cut. And be careful, you know, these razor blades are sharp. Don't do this when you're like tired, two, three o'clock in the morning, you know. I don't want to get emailed back that you chopped your finger off. <laughs> Be careful. Okay, so now, oh, you just keep going. And we have our little template here. Now what I can do, is I can just draw a mass. Now I need to be off axis. I can't be right in the center. I've, I need to be off axis. So let's add a little bit of a lip here and then I can use anything. I mean, you can use a, you know, anything that's round to make your, your little off axis mask. Now again, we're making the off axis mask. It's not gonna gather as much light uh, but gosh, you know, on the moon, you've got so much light to work with, and having a smaller aperture 
if we have any of the you know, bad seeing where, it, and seeing conditions can range from perfect, you know, think, think of the atmosphere above you like it's, like it's uh, you're looking through water, you know, and there's times where you look at a lake and it's perfectly glassy, there's no disturbance in the water whatsoever. We could drop uh, something to the bottom and if the water's clear, uh, you can see it perfectly on the bottom. But if you have like hot and cold currents running through, you have waves and stuff like that, it gets blurrier and blurrier to the point of where you can't hardly see the object at all. And it's the same thing with our atmosphere. But when you have a smaller aperture, it can see through those cells of turbulent air easier. Okay, we've got our mask made, and now what we're going to do is, uh, I'm just gonna get some tape. Uh, you can use uh, masking tape, or painter's tape, or gaffer's tape, or whatever kind of tape you want to, you know. But the, the tape will just hold it onto the front of the telescope. And so let's just go put it on, we can show you how it fits. Okay, so you can see the scope here. This is a, a Newtonian telescope, and if you look closely, at the center, we had the central obstruction, which is the reason why I made my mask off axis, okay? So to use it, you know, I just got a couple of pieces of tape here. I'm just gonna put that on there and this on here like so. And when you put on your smartphone, you're gonna see that the image initially gets dimmer, but the exposure will adjust. And you just might see a much sharper image than what you had before because we're now looking through um, you know, a smaller aperture, which handles bad seeing much, much better. So this is also something that will spell success for you on planets uh, if the seeing is not perfect. If you have perfect seeing though, and the sky's perfectly calm and everything's great, you know, go ahead and take it off if you want. Um, but again, it may overpower the exposure range of your smartphone camera. So masks are important for amateur telescopes and also for professional telescopes. I've been to big observatories where they had a giant off-axis mask that they would lay over the primary mirror when seeing was not so great, okay? And they went to, uh, they needed less aperture uh, for their bigger telescope. Remember, you can always take it, make a big telescope smaller, but you can never make a small telescope bigger. But the other type of mask that can be made up is for focusing. And this is, there's been all kinds of different uh, solutions for making masks for getting exact focus. And this is what we'll talk about in our next video. But this is called a Batinoff mask. And I printed this one out from deepskywatch.com. Batinoff uh, was uh, uh, an astronomer that wanted to improve focusing for astrophotography. And he came up with this design. The way it works is, these lines, uh, you, would, you would cut all of this out so that starlight passes through basically the screen. And, uh, and what it does is it splits up the light so it's making diffraction spikes. And you are lining up the diffraction spikes right in the very center of a star. So we'll show you how all that works in the next video.